Hey everyone, this is Derek, and this is uh, section 5.2, and it's going to be never ending. I think it's probably going to end up two parts. Uh, so I'm going to do factoring square roots and completing the square. So the first three topics is in the first video, and then quadratic formula, solving by graphing, and then the funky formula ones at the end in the second video. So we're going to solve quadratics in many, many ways, and that's because there's lots of ways to do it. and depending on what you're looking at, sometimes, most of the time, there's a best way and a terrible way. So we're gonna to try to figure out what the easiest way is to do it given the circumstances we are facing. Uh, so first up is factoring. Factoring is a super important skill. If you are going on in math and you haven't quite mastered factoring, this is a great time to get this under your belt. So solving quadratics by factoring. Um, I have this uh, sheet where I kind of put all the methods just in one big box at the beginning of the assignment. So for factoring, we're going to move everything over to one side of the equation, which is often where we start from. Um, we're going to factor the equation completely, and then we're going to set each of the factors equal to zero. We're going to solve those. And hopefully that's super familiar. So looking at this, we'll get it with everything over and equal to zero. So I'm going to subtract 63 on both sides, and I have equals zero. And now this is a trinomial, so remember with these ones, um, this is the kind where it's, it, it feels a lot like a reverse foil. We ask what multiplies to be negative 73 and then adds to be that value in the middle, because when we foil, they end up adding to be the value in the middle and multiplying to be the end. So um, x is up front, and then when it's a negative, the way I like to think about it is this 2 isn't what they add to, I mean, it is with the signs, but I think of it as I'm looking for numbers that are two apart, and that helps me spot nine and seven a little bit easier than going, okay, negative seven, positive nine, make positive two, um, which they do. Um, and then we set each of these factors to zero, because something times something makes zero, so that means one of those things has to be zero. So bringing over the 7, x equals 7. Bringing over the 9, x equals negative 9. And you certainly don't have to show all those steps that I just did, but there it is just kind of as a reminder in case you haven't seen that for a little bit. Um, this next one, uh, this we use the zero principle here to solve, and this does not equal zero, so we need to unfortunately distribute, incorporate the 28 over, and then refactor. So we'll go x times x and get x squared, x times 3 for 3x, and then let's go ahead and subtract 28 on both sides while we're here. So minus 28, and then that would leave 0 on the uh, right-hand side. So now, another negative one, so we're looking for two numbers that multiply to be 28, that, like I said, in my mind, I like to think of our 3 apart because of the negative, so 7 and 4 jump out. So positive on the 7, negative on the 4, and so x would be negative 7 or Four. Okay, some more factoring. Um, this case we have two terms, and sometimes it's this like too easy, it's hard. So we got x squared plus 3x, so in that case it's just a common factor of x is all that we can do. And if you kind of distribute back x times x, there's our x squared and there's our 3x equals 0. So that means either x equals 0, that's the one out front. Even if this had been 7x, it's still 7x equals 0, x is 0. Um, and then this one will give us x equals negative 3. So anytime we have an x out front, then 0 is a solution. Uh, this next one also has two terms, um, but there's that common factor again of x. So let's get that out of the way. So x, and then I'll leave x squared minus 25 equals 0. And this one, hopefully, uh, you remember, is our uh, difference of two squares. So a squared minus b squared, we get a plus b, a minus b. So this would be x, x plus 5, x minus 5. And so then we started off with a cube, and I have one, two, three x's. So I'm going to have three answers. So we have x equals 0 from that one, negative 5 for that one, and then positive 5 for that one. Uh, another cube, this time it's four terms, and so you might remember um, factor by grouping. So anytime we see a problem with four terms, um, at least at this stage, it's if it's a factoring problem, it's going to be a grouping problem. So here, let me write this a little bit bigger. Uh, 
Okay, if I look at what's common um, in the first two terms, and this is the grouping, I'm going to group the first two terms together and the second two terms together. Um, I can pull an x squared out of there. So we'll go x squared, and that leaves me an x plus 2. If this is going to work, I'm going to get another x plus 2, because that ends up being my common factor. And since this is a factoring section, it is going to work. And if you look, I need to pull a negative 1 out of those. So negative 1 times x, negative x, negative 1 times 2, negative 2. So if I factor that negative out, then what that does let's see, is it gives me this as a common factor. And I can pull that out front, and it's going to leave behind the x squared and the minus 1. So now this is like a GCF, so x plus 2 leaves behind x squared minus 1. Just think if this said like x squared y minus 1y. We'd have a y out front, x squared minus 1 left. And then there's another one of those difference of squares, so we'll finish factoring that. Oops, and not change the sign. So x plus 1, x minus 1. Again, we started with a cube. We got one, two, three uh, x's. So we have three intercepts and three answers. So x equals negative two, negative one, and one. Uh, number six, this is an a squared plus two ab plus b squared. And that factors to a plus b squared every time. And then if this had happened to have been a minus, then that's a minus. And so what kind of stands out at me in this problem is it has kind of awful numbers, but those awful numbers are perfect squares. So it makes me think it's probably going to be one of these. I'm certainly going to try that before I did anything else. So this is asking, you know, 49x squared is a squared, so then what would the a be? That would be a 7x, because 7x times 7x, that would give us a squared. 4 to 9x squared. What times what gives us 4? 2. And if you FOIL all that back out, you'll get 14 and 14. And there's the 28 in the middle, and it is the same thing. Um, and so it's just nice. If you can recognize it, you can just jump straight to there's the factored form of the answer. And again, the kind of the, it's, the, it's the friend of this. It's the friend of the difference of two squares. It's just the version that has the 2ab in the middle. And anytime you see those squares on the ends, that's, that's one to be suspicious of. That's kind of the tip on this. Okay, so this is going to get us to our uh, second method of solving. And this works when we have something squared. So it's the square root property of equations. So if I have a squared equals b, then I can take the square root of both sides and get a equals plus or minus the root of b. And so basically squares can be undone with roots. We just have to be careful that we have, we're going to end up with um, two distinct answers. Okay, and I think before even I do the one with the kind of crappy number, I'm just going to do an easy one for a second. x squared equals 9. And so if I go, okay, what's the answer? One goes 3. And that's totally true because 3 times 3 totally does make 9. Uh, negative 3 times negative 3 also makes 9. And so that's why when we do the square root on both sides, we have to account for the fact that there are two solutions. Um, so here, square root x squared makes x equals plus or minus 3. So 3 times 3 for 9, negative 3 times negative 3 also makes 9. So that's where that plus or minus is coming from. So now we'll try that with some messier stuff. So here we got x squared equals 147. So okay, we'll do the root on both sides. We'll throw the plus or minus there. So that's going to give us x. And then that 147, um, 2 definitely doesn't go in because it ends in a 7. I would try 3 next, and then you would discover that this is the same thing as uh, 49 times 3. So this is going to be plus or minus 7, and then root 3. Uh, this next one, let me write a little bit bigger. So I will root both sides. And so square root undoes square, so this just becomes 2x minus 1 equals plus or minus, square root of 9 is 3. So this is like literally two different numbers. This is plus 3 and minus 3. So we kind of have two different problems going now, and I'll show you that at the end. So I'm still going to solve like I would. I would add the 1, I'd divide the 2. 
So here goes with that. So adding the 1 over, I get 1 plus or minus 3. And then we'll divide both sides by 2. And I got my x by itself. So that means that x is either 1 plus 3 divided by 2 um, or 1 minus 3 divided by 2. So 1 plus 3 would be 4 over 2 or 2. And then this one comes out negative 2 over 2 or negative 1. So x is 2 or negative 1. Um, but so that's how that plus or minus works, is it's quite literally plus the thing or minus the thing. Two totally separate answers. Okay, this one's the same idea, except now we have a negative. So when I do the root uh, and with the plus or minus, we're going to get um, uh, imaginary numbers. And then our answer is going to have complex form, which actually makes it way easier to type because they give it the box. So this would be 3x minus 2 equals, this would be plus or minus, square root of 25 would be 5, and then because of the negative under the radical, 5i. And now we'll add over our 2, 3x equals 2 plus or minus 5i, and then divide 3 for both sides. And you can see they have it all set up. The 2 just goes in this box, 5 there, and the 3 there. Okay, and that gets us to our third method, which is uh, completing the square. And what this is, is we're trying to take something that isn't in the form a squared plus or minus, if the sign was minus, 2ab, um, that isn't in that nice, perfect trinomial, trinomial square form. And we're going to complete the square. We're going to get a version of something here that makes this work so that then we're able to factor it to a plus b quantity squared. And again, if that happened to be a minus, then that's a minus. That's the goal of completing the square, is to make this thing so that we can get this thing. And then we can do our square root on both sides like we just did in those last two examples. So let me show you the steps for how we go about doing that. Um, step one is to get the c term out of the way because it's just gonna get rolled into what we're gonna solve on the right-hand side. So let me take this and write it a little bit bigger. Um, I have a T in the problem and a Y here. Uh, why don't we just pretend like that says T. So T squared plus 10T plus 19 equals zero. So I'm going to write that as equals negative 19. Um, so I'm isolating the terms of the T or over here in this example, X, but the squared term. If A is one, divide through by A. A is not one, so we're not going to do that. Or A is one, so we don't have to do that. Um, and then next is the magical step where we take half of B, we square it, and we add the result to both sides. So we're going to take this 10, and we're going to go half of that 10 is 5. And then we're going to square that, which is 25, and then that's what I want to add to both sides. And I'll show you how come in just a second, but let me actually do it. Okay, the reason this works is because we're right back here. What we need is b squared. So we're taking half of this right here because we want to knock out the 2. a is the x, or the t in this case, so we're ignoring that. So when I do the half, what I just found was b, and when I square it, there's my b squared. That's what I'm adding to both sides, and that's about to let me factor. Um, and even if that made not a ton of sense, Half of 10 is 5, 5 squared is 25, add it to both sides, and that's the, the operation. And you'll see when you do it, what happens is now this side factors, t plus 5 squared, so now we can use our root principle. And then here we just roll it in with this term that we moved over and solve. Um, so from there we can square root both sides like those last couple examples. And we get t plus 5 equals plus or minus root 6. And then move the 5 over. So t equals negative 5 plus or minus root 6. Okay, so super important. Enter your answers separated by commas if no real solution, D and E. Okay, so we have answers. Um, but you'll be super confused how to type this. So this is two solutions. The first solution is negative 5 minus root 6. That's the smaller one, so I'm listening at first out of habit. The second one is negative 5 
plus root 6. So the same way if these answers had came up to t equaled 7 and 5, you would you know, go 5 comma 7. This is what you're typing here. So these are our two distinct solutions. They just are messy.